conversations continue here in Davos. We're now joined by Surya, who's representing Cognizant here this evening. Uh, Surya, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, it's great to have you on CNBC TV 18. You know, you're client-facing, uh, and client-facing in the Americas specifically. Uh, from the conversations that you've been having, what's the sense that you get in terms of the mood, in terms of risk aversion, or whether they are willing to take risks at this point in time? Uh, you know, what's the, the sense that you get? First of all, thank you, Sharin. Thank you for having me in this Davos. <laughs> it's still freezing, but relatively better, I guess, today. Yes, you know, the mood is still cautious. Uh, you know, the client, the discretionary spend is still under pressure, and uh, it is still congested in the market. Some sex sectors are more, uh, you know, cautious than others. But in general, the caution, the cautious, uh, you know, approach is expected to continue for at least three more quarters. Mm -hmm. Many analysts predict that, you know, it's going to be three more quarters before we see, you know, uh, the spend opening up. Uh, you know, when you talk about some sectors which are perhaps a little more cautious than others, which would those be? And where do you believe that we could potentially see green truths emerge if they haven't already? The financial services sector is still, you know, the clients in financial services sector are still very cautious. Um, you know, the manufacturing sector is opening up a little. You know, we see clients uh, beginning to spend in that sector. Uh, the consumer, uh, the consumer is still a little compressed, but manufacturing definitely. The clients in life sciences are, you know, opening up. The demand is coming back in life sciences a bit, relatively, relatively. Mm. Uh, so, you know, in terms of deals, etc. Uh, so, since discretionary at this point in time, still a question mark. More sort of cost takeout deals that are uh, underway. Yes. Cost takeout deals are still underway. In fact, uh, in the market, we are seeing a lot of uh, movement on the cost takeout deals. It has been that way for the last few quarters, and we expect this uh, pattern to continue for the next two or three quarters. That said, a few uh, transformation deals are opening up in a very selective format. Mm. These are not very large, but uh, some Gen, gen AI-oriented, AI-oriented transformation deals are opening up. Some clients are beginning to start think about start to think about those deals. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's talking about Gen AI, it's very hard to walk down this promenade and not be consumed by yeah. AI and Gen AI. Uh, you know, what, what, what are clients asking you? What are they telling you? What are they looking for? Listen, you know, Gen AI is ubiquitous right now. So whoever we speak to, whoever we talk to, in fact, it's the topic in every single boardroom uh, in every enterprise across the planet. Uh, the clients we discuss or we, uh, we work with are looking at this in three vectors. Gen AI for productivity and optimization, leveraging Gen AI for enhancing the consumer experience, and leveraging Gen AI for driving growth, new sources of revenue. So clients are looking at it in three different vectors. Most of the use cases so far have been around consumer experience, enhancing the user experience, and driving more efficiency and uh, productivity. So the use cases across the industry have been focused on in these two vectors. There are a few clients who are beginning to start to think of leveraging Gen AI to drive new sources of revenue or to drive growth. So we are beginning to and see those. And which sectors would those clients be in? Uh, you know, we have seen some in the healthcare sector, and uh, we have seen uh, some in. Uh, communication sector too. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, now that you have been having these conversations and engaging with clients about the possibility of them uh, taking on projects that involve uh, Gen AI, uh, what are we talking about, you know, at, at scale? Uh, is it still a couple of years uh, out? I don't think it would be a couple of years. Uh, you know, I think we, will, we are going to see projects at scale in about 12 to 15 months from now. Oh, that early, is that it? Early, yeah. Okay. They're beginning to show up. Mm. Until six months ago, the project size and the duration was very small. We used to see small projects, small pilots here and there. Quantify that for me. What would small mean? What would large small mean? Would be a half a million okay. to a million max. But now we are beginning to see the projects that range up to 10 million, 15 million. So we expect uh, you know this to progress further. And we'll start probably seeing you know large deals in the space. And in fact, Gen AI is integral part of many large deals that we are doing. Though they are cost takeout deals, we are leveraging AI and Gen AI technologies to drive cost optimization. So in many ways, this AI is integral part of the cost takeout deals also. Mm. So. You know, so what is what are the pain points for clients? I mean, I'm trying to understand what would it take for them to start spending. Is it just the macros? Uh, what is hurting them at this point in time, or what's causing them to press the pause button? I mean, there are two elements in my opinion. One is definitely the macro part of it. The other element is, you know, clients want to see how this AI or Gen AI revolution pans out. They just don't want to be caught on the wrong side. So that's why they're a little cautious to see how this technology is going to evolve, how this is going to pan out, 
how the other industries or how the other uh, you know uh, elements of this will pan out in the next few months and uh, so that's why they are little cautious but they're beginning to they're beginning to open up uh, you know compared to gen ai and and get excited about it and excited about gen ai and the transformation projects leveraging gen ai yeah, so you've seen many up yeah. cycles and down cycles. Uh, uh, given the fact that 2023 was expected to be far worse than it eventually turned out to be, the fears that people had on how bad things were, the economy proved to be a little bit more resilient than that, and companies, including in tech, uh, uh, you know, managed to do better. Uh, as you look at the environment today, what's your sense about 2024? I mean, 2024, we ex uh I expect the demand congestion to continue at least for the first three quarters. That's what many analysts have been saying in the market. I, 2024 is expected to be relatively better than 2023. Mm. And as clients begin to open up, you know, as the economy eases a little, the congestion is expected to ease towards Q3, and the spend is expected to come back by Q3. So how many, how many meetings have you logged in Davos? <laughs> <laughs> Probably 25 so far, 25, 30, and it continues. I mean, Davos is an amazing platform. You know, this gives, uh, this is, there's no better stage than Davos or World Economic Forum. But it's also getting very competitive out there, isn't it? I mean, just this promenade, every tech company, uh, you know, worth its salt is, is here. So how do you ensure that you have a key differentiation that you take to clients? Yeah, that's a very good question, Shereen. I mean, you're right. It's extremely competitive. No one wants to miss out. So, I mean, there are three elements. When we came to Davos, we came in with three objectives. The first is we want to tell our cognizant story on a platform like this uh, to clients, to, you know, to everyone else, to, to our... Uh, and the second element of this is to learn, to learn and to be part of the dialogue that's happening on Gen AI here. And it also gives a huge networking opportunity. So we drive differentiation through uh, telling our story of what we are doing at Cognizant or what is new at Cognizant mm -hmm. and talking about the tailored industry-specific offerings that we are incubating powered by Gen AI. So that's our key differentiation. So, you know, you talked about learnings as well. What's been the big learning for you from here? <laughs> <laughs> so I've attended, attended a few sessions. It's interesting how different uh, entities in this AI or Gen AI world are coming together to build trust. So talk about the creators of AI or users of AI or uh, businesses or the policy makers. It's amazing to see how everyone is rallying and coming together onto a single platform to talk about how and when Gen AI can be deployed mm. and how we can build trust and how we can collectively mitigate the detrimental effects of Gen AI. Mm. So it's amazing, I mean, that's an amazing learning for me. So we're gonna use that, you know, we're gonna leverage that into our offerings and uh, into our organization as we build our Gen AI and AI muscle. So. Yes, I would imagine. One big change that you would like to drive through 24? Power, power our offerings with Gen AI, stay on the front foot, help our clients, uh, work with our clients, identify where the puck is moving in each industry, and customize uh, our offerings uh, tailored for our clients. You know, what could the addressable market be on the back of uh, at least the visibility that you have when we talk about Gen AI or linking Gen AI to existing projects or, or new projects? What could the addressable so market be? It depends be? on who you talk to. Yes. There are uh, different numbers uh, in play uh, anywhere from... What are you working with? <laughs> anywhere from uh, 500 billion to uh, a trillion kind of a thing. Yeah, so. so it's a large it's opportunity. A, it's, a huge, it's a huge opportunity. It's going to pan out over a period of time. It may not be immediate, uh, as we all uh, as we discussed, but it's a huge opportunity. Almost every enterprise mm -hmm. uh, is going to impact every single enterprise and every one of us in our daily lives. So mm -hmm. this technology, is that this revolution is much bigger than any of what we have had in the prior years. Mm -hmm. And the impact of this technology revolution is going to be immense too. I think we recently uh, conducted, uh, partnered with Oxford Research mm -hmm and um, you know, conducted a survey too. And we evaluated uh, about 1,000 jobs in the United States and 18,000 tasks. And the findings were mind-boggling. And it's always believed that almost in the next 10 years, $1 trillion is going to be induced into the US economy, $1 trillion of value into US economy. And um, the findings also suggested that 90% of the jobs that we do in the market today will be influenced by Gen AI. So Gen AI uh, is going to... ...the revolution is going to create a lot more jobs as we move along. So we are very excited, and, you know, so... Well, yes, the, the fear is that we're going to see job disruption and job losses, but you're saying that it could also potentially open up 
uh, new yeah. areas of opportunity and create newer jobs. Perhaps some redundancies will, of course, have to be factored in. That's uh, uh, obvious and that's part of every tech cycle, but you're saying that it will open up newer jobs as well. Yes, as part of this uh, you know, research we did, uh, you know, Gen AI is uh, going to be a social equalizer in many ways. Unlike the previous technology revolutions where the benefits were not equally distributed across the society, the people who were highly educated and privileged got more benefits of the technology revolution. Uh, whereas Gen AI, this technology revolution is going to be, the benefits will be reaped uniformly across, and if any, they will, the benefits of Gen AI will be uh, more towards the low-end workers, thereby creating social equality. And this is kind of a balance wheel. So every every other technology revolution had you know this apprehension of job losses yeah. in the yeah. first initial yes. phases. This technology revolution also will go through that, but it's going to create a lot more jobs, uh, you know, uh, than it would eliminate in many ways. Gen AI, a force for social equalization. Surya, it's been an absolute pleasure. Many thanks for joining us on CNBC TV 18. We wish you the very best of luck and look forward to seeing you back in India. Thank you, Shireen. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. Well, we are going to take a break here on the conversations in Davos, but uh, there's lots more coming up. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a moment.